purpose of this mini lecture is to demonstrate the use of Solver. We have to first understand Solver before we can understand how to program it in a macro. What I've got here is an example of a portfolio decision. And usually decisions are not just single variant decisions, but they're usually multiple things that we have to balance here. In this case, we let the user select the beta using an ActiveX scroll. And then we ha let the user also choose the maximum invested in any given stock. So that provides a constraint. And that's often the case in portfolio analysis that you cannot have uh, more than a certain percentage invested in a given stock. Now let me show you how Solver is used in the basic application here. So I go to the data ribbon and if Solver is not an add-in in your version of Excel then you need to add it in. I do have, uh, find that if I have some add-ins like analysis, the uh, data analysis for VBA added in at the same time, Solver doesn't always work. So there's some little quirkiness about Solver which um, we have to overcome. So what I've got here is a bunch of stocks, their betas, and what we want Solver to do is determine the weights. This is a run from the particular one that I just did. But what I want to do is I'm going to just change the beta and what I've got here is the user chooses a beta of 1.11. Right now the portfolio beta is 1.25 or a difference of 0.14 from the objective. So we use Solver in the following way. We have the objective which is actually the difference cell so that the value is equal to zero. You'll find that using Solver it's much easier to set it up logically so that if you are going to solve for a value that is going to be actually equal to zero. If you had a specific value in there every time the user chooses another value you'd have to change the solver command and that really wouldn't be practical. This way the user can change their preference for beta and you don't have to change the solver. And then we allow changing variable cells to be D8 to D37 in this case. And then we have two constraints. One is that the sum of the weights is equal to 1 or 100%. So we have the portfolio fully invested in stocks. And that the other is that each weight is going to be less than the maximum the user chose, which in this case is 47%. And so what we're going to do is we're going to solve and it's going to change the, the weights. And you may not notice the weights uh, changing as much. So what I'm going to do is increase the precision that you can witness here. And you can see it a little bit better if we do the solver. So I'm going to change this again. So let's say that the user wants a beta of exactly 1. Well, right now the beta is 1.11. So we want to use solver. So we go data, solver. And then we run this again. Found a solution. And this is a well-behaved problem. There are some problems that you can do in finance that are not well-behaved. It takes a while to converge. You might have to use a different me uh, method. But this is a fairly well-behaved uh, procedure. So what we're going to do is we just have it choose weights that add up to 100%, which is not hard for solver to do. And the maximum of one stock, 47% yeah, is not a constraint, big constraint. Now if we change that to a smaller number, then it might be a bigger constraint. But you get the basic idea. But I want you to bring your attention to the solver here. So what we've got is an objective. So when we write a macro, we're going to have to have an objective somewhere. And specify either max, min, or value of. And then by changing cells, that's going to be one the, what we're going to instruct Excel to do is change cells and then subject to constraints. In this way you aren't embedding any specific numbers in here but rather the user can change the numbers within the spreadsheet using the scroll bars and then Excel will then uh, work this. Now you also have make unconstrained variables non-negative. I didn't put a constraint in here that the there's no short selling. A negative weight would be a short sell. I didn't do that. Um, 
but I could have. If I uncheck that box, then some of these weights could be negative. And if we have a much more complex objective function where we're actually going to be maximizing, you know, beta and return and a few other things at the same time, then, yeah, then uh, uh, it's going to be very important to make sure you understand whether you want the variables to be negative, positive, or either one. So. So you make those decisions. But keep in mind what's going on here with the constraints, because when we get into the solver macro, that's going to be important. And in terms of the solving method, we're using the default. But there are other methods. And I will tell you, there's some complex problems that I've done before. I've had to resort to another method that was better behaved for the particular problem that I had at hand. And you do have options in terms of number of iterations. So the more complex the problem you're trying to solve, you may have to allow for more iterations than the default number. So you have to keep that in mind. So, And you can look at the precision here. This is how precise we are in achieving that objective. So if I took this out here to those that number of decimal places, you would see a 1 there. And you can also have it show iteration results, but that's rather annoying since you could have, you know, 100 iterations. So there are a lot of things you can do. You can have it ignore integer constraints, but I uh, normally wouldn't recommend that unless you can allow for percentages. So you have to be careful there. Uh, so if we were making a decision, let's say uh, invest or not invest decision, that would have to be a 1 or a 0. It really can't do half investment, something like that. So you have to be very careful in specifying these things. With that solver, we just hit solve and it'll solve, find a solution, and all done.